world. U.S. to sanction Xinjiang. The U.S. Senate just unanimously passed the Uyghur Forced Labor Prevention Act, which, if implemented, would result in a blanket ban on the import of all goods produced in Xinjiang, China, making this an effective sanction on Xinjiang by the U.S. Importers must prove that their products do not use forced labor to be considered for an exemption to the ban. In comparison, the current rules dictate that a ban on goods from Xinjiang would only occur if evidence of forced labor had been, had been actually found. The US has accused China of imprisoning roughly 1 million Uyghurs and committing various human rights abuses against them, including forced labor. The act will most likely clear the US House of Representatives almost unanimously, as this is a bipartisan effort between both the Democrats and the Republicans. Once settled, it will then be approved by US President Joe Biden. It is highly likely that China will follow up with some sort of tit-for-tat measure to retaliate against the US when the act passes. In this current economic downturn, it does not bode well if for the future if the two largest economies on Earth continue to raise tensions and sever trade links. China's growth slightly slower than expected. With small COVID-19 outbreaks occurring sporadically, which hurt consumer spending, alongside rising raw material costs and tighter pollution controls, China's GDP growth fell short of economic forecasts for the second quarter, with it achieving 7.9% growth instead of the expected 8.1% growth. This is also dramatically lower as compared to the first quarter, where it experienced a record 18.3% growth due to a low economic base caused by the pandemic. This shows that growth in China has peaked last quarter and that it will most likely continue to decline going forward. China has announced that it is not going to provide any kind of large stimulus package to boost the economy, even after this latest economic report. As a key engine of global economic growth, China's current performance puts into question whether or not any worldwide economic recovery will actually happen. The EU's New Climate Plan On Wednesday, European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen reviewed an ambitious plan for Europe to achieve full carbon neutrality by 2050. The 291-page plan intends to close loopholes in the form of exemptions in the current emissions trading scheme, as well as raising the price of carbon permits, increasing the cost of polluting for companies involved. It also details the creation of a second carbon market for domestic heating industries and road transportation, while also mandating that all new cars must be emission-free by 2035. This section of the plan is politically controversial, as many lower-income Europeans rely on coal, gas, or oil for heating their homes during winter and for transportation, meaning that the plan will cause their living expenses to skyrocket. In fact, there have already been large-scale yellow vest protests in France over high fuel and transportation costs in the countryside. The most radical aspect of the plan is the proposal to levy a CO2 border adjustment, which means that a new tax would be implemented on goods imported from overseas based on how much CO2 was emitted in the process of manufacturing said goods. While this will level the playing field within the EU and increase the competitiveness of European goods in local markets, it will also lead to a massive rise in the cost of living for the average European. The Democrats in the US have also introduced a similar measure to this as part of their US dollar 3.5 trillion uh, budget plan, though they have not provided any concrete details such as expected revenue or what would be taxed. Australia condemned the plan as a form of thinly veiled economic protectionism, arguing that such policies were only being considered as a way to boost government revenue and that this would, looking at the previous track record of such plans, do little to actually reduce emissions. Australia also believes that the plan violates global trade rules and insisted that providing incentives for, per for polluters to switch to clean alternatives would be more effective instead. Should this plan pass in both the EU and the US, then Singapore's status as a major transshipment and oil processing hub 
would be put in jeopardy.